a smile on the face of Mark Selby. Nothing unusual there. Welcome back, everyone, to Live World Snooker.tv and the semi finals of the Accurate Antwerp Open from the Lotto Arena here in Antwerp, Belgium. <laughs> Hilda Mearns. Best of seven, first frame. Refereeing in her home and country. She's a break. Belgian and she's proudly in charge of this semi final. We're concentrating on between Mark Selby and Ali Carter. The other semi-final, of course, Andrew Paget, the amateur from Wales, who scored a stunning 4-3 win over Neil Robertson around an hour ago. He's taking on Mark Allen. Allen coming from 3-1 down and requiring a couple of snookers in frame five to beat Ben Wollaston 4-3. Ali Carter has had experience of this table here today. Beat John Higgins 4-3 on the black in our first televised match this morning. Mark Selby has won his two matches away from the television cameras. Mark Selby, and I just one. wonder whether that will have some kind of impact because this table is playing rather unusually, to put it diplomatically. Again, the distance is the best of seven frames, as it will be in the final, which, by the way, begins at 7 o'clock British time. That's 8 o'clock Central European. Nine. Ali <coughs> Carter, 16. Well, that was nothing to do with the table. That was a very bad miss. Well, maybe it was a kick, you know, because Mark Selby having the cue ball cleaned, I might have been overly critical there of Carter. We have seen an awful lot of kicks. He played that one quite slowly, so it was hard to detect. But it went to the thick parts of the jaw, and so maybe we need to give Carter the benefit of the doubt there. One. Funny old day so far for Mark Selby. Began with a real grind against Paul Davison. Selby winning that one 4-3 from 3-2 down. The match lasted for 2 hours and 47 minutes. It gave him around Six. 10 minutes between matches. Went from the last 16 straight into the quarterfinals. And after being the last player into the quarterfinals, Seven. he was the first player into the semi-finals because he whitewashed Marco Fu 4-0. A performance highlighted by a 116 break in the second frame. His frames won 
and lost strike rate in this tournament so oh. far. It's pretty impressive, Mark Selby. Won 20 frames, lost only four. He's recorded three 4 0 whitewashes, one 4 1 win. And the only time he was really tested was against Davison in the last 16. In the top half of the draw, Mark Selby. So, played his first three matches in this tournament on Friday and yesterday off. 19. Started out with a 4 0 win over Urien Hurstens, a Belgian amateur. Then he beat Mark Davis 4 1, making a 101 break en route. And then secured his place in the final day of the tournament with a 4 0 win over Ryan Day of Wales. 26. Never easy, though, to break up the Reds when you're taking the cue ball off the top cushion into them. It's not even a toss of the coin. I think the odds are, are worse than that. the object ball and that kind of cut it is so hard so hard to, to judge Whether it was a kick, whether it was a, a plain old miss, regardless. 41. The red that went astray for Carter is proving expensive. Forty nine. Top of the world rankings, Mark Before. Selby, of course. And if he were to win this match, he would be top of the PTC Order of Merit as well, displacing Stephen Maguire. Fifty-five. Forty points the difference, so the black and one more red needed. Sixty-two. Sixty-three. Well, he's taken his chance really well here, hasn't he? You get the impression he's won over Foo. 
will have instilled more confidence in Selby. And I think that confidence is shining through in this break. 69 70 76 Well, oh, that's a pussy. Break ends at 76, but a really good start from Mark Selby. Part of Mr. Red, he shouldn't have. Selby stepped in in a single scoring visit. Wraps up the frame quite convincingly. Mark Selby 1, Ali Carter 0. Well, the other semi final is taking place on the table just across from here. Still in the first frame. Andrew Paget leads Mark Allen by 31 points to three, although Allen is at the table scoring. As you might be able to see there. I would be astounded if Paget were to repeat his surprise win over Neil Robertson and knock out Mark Allen as well. But we will wait and see. Already, by the way, by virtue of what he's done here, Paget has climbed to 26th on the PTC Order of Merit. The next one of these events, by the way, takes place in Sofia, in Bulgaria. As always, of course, we'll be bringing you the action from there. Second that event frame, takes place on to break. November 16, November 17 and November 18, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Before that, of course, it's the big event over in China in the city of Chengdu. The International Championship, the inaugural stage in of that tournament, which begins here on Live World Snooker TV, bright and early at 6:30 a.m. British time, 7:30 Central European time, next Sunday morning. Super shot from Carter, and not a bad kiss either. He scored pretty well so far in the tournament. Ali Carter made four century breaks. 111, 122 in overcoming Ryan Corston, an amateur in the first round, 4-0. And he also put together two centuries in beating Joe Perry 4-1 in the quarterfinals. Also had victories over the likes of Jamie Cope, Barry Hawkins, and in the last 16 this morning, he beat John Higgins 4-3. Higgins missing the 13. brown to win the match to a middle pocket. Carter potting brown blue 
pink and black to snatch it. 4-3. Fourteen. Seems to be sniffing a little bit. I don't know whether he's got the beginnings of a cold. Twenty-one. Mind you, when you've suffered from Crohn's disease, as Carter has for most of his professional career, twenty-two. Common or garden cold is not really an issue. I'm glad to say he's feeling quite healthy these days changed his diet just before the world championship and it seems to have done the trick 21. that though has not done the trick can't get through to the open red because of the pink 29 He believes he can squeeze through to pop this red to the middle pocket. Didn't intend to drop on this one. Oh, it would have been a real bonus had it dropped. Now, if he's left the red to the top left-hand corner pocket, it could be really costly. I think he's certainly got one red. Six. And the pack is open nicely, hasn't it? Seven. Not an awkward ball on the table. Okay, the pink might be a little hemmed in. Apart from that, they're all there, aren't they? Well, so far, Selby going about his business very efficiently. Mind you, that was the case in the quarterfinals on this table when Neil Robertson took a 2-0 lead over Andrew Padgett with breaks of 79 and 72. Then, of course, the whole complexion of the match changed. Just caught a brief glimpse there of the other table. Safety exchange going on on the blue. Mark Allen four points ahead, so he needs needs blue and pink. Andrew Paget needs 
all three remaining colours. I'll keep you informed. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Looks a little too straight on the black for Comfort. Has to screw back now for the red to the middle pocket. 55. Carter uneasy in his chair. Concerned about going 2 0 down. Now I told you I will keep you informed about what happened on table two. Well, the fairy tale continues because Andrew Paget took the first frame from Mark Allen, potting blue, pink and black to steal it at the death. Andrew Paget, the amateur, won. Mark Allen, fixture in the top 16, nil. Near jaw, near jaw. Mark Selby, fifty eight. Not there. And so still hope for Ali Carter. Selby only 29 ahead. Forty three on the table. Selby will be mindful here that he can't afford any kind of misjudgment. The table is more in favour of Carter than him. Had a few colours been safe or maybe the odd red, 29 points would have been a useful advantage, but everything's in the open, apart from the red he's going to take on. Pink obviously not ideal, but it's certainly not welded to a cushion. today. Eight. Nine. Well, Carter must have thought that he got Selby in a little bit of bother there. 
as it is, Cotter's not going to play another shot in the frame. Twenty-five. Thirty. That's a big thirty. It's left to come to the frame win, 88 points to 29, but that was a little misleading. Had Selby made a mistake on the penultimate red, Ali Carter could quite easily have snatched it. He didn't make a mistake though. He stroked it beautifully into a top corner pocket without touching the jaws. Made 30 clearance to blue and with that he's taken a 2-0 lead and taken it impressively because he won the first frame thanks to a 76 break. A little slower going in the other semi-final to report for you. Andrew Paget won, Mark Allen nil. Paget potting blue, pink and black to win the opening frame. But you might be able to make out there the left-hander Mark Allen at the table in prime scoring territory, currently on a run of <laughs> looking poised to draw level at one frame each. Allen's had a few reasonable performances in PTCs, but if you were to win this, it would be by far his best result in these competitions. Mark Selby's looking for his second players to a championship victory of the season. Selby won the Paul Hunter Classic in late August in Firth, Germany overcoming Joe Swale in the final, 4-1. Swale, of course, this year lost his place on the main tour, and so playing as an amateur, and I'm just wondering whether Selby might play another amateur in Andrew Paget in this final. Not beyond the bounds of possibility, you know. His current opponent has left the arena for a short time. Yes, when he won the Paul Hunter Classic, Selby beat the likes of Sean O'Sullivan, Gerard Green, Mark Davis, Robbie Williams... Ken Doherty, Pankaj Advani, and in the final, Swale. So he didn't play another member of the top 16 Third frame. to win that event. Break. That's unusual. He's had a, a tougher draw on paper this time, Selby, beating the likes of Marco Fu, Ryan Day, and Mark Davis. I think, though, everyone would agree that Ali Carter certainly in terms of what he's achieved in recent years would be his toughest opponent to date here
I can tell you Mark Allen is definitely going to draw level with Andrew Paget at 1-1. He's currently on a 90 break. If he makes a century, I think the crowd will let you know. Fantastic crowds here at the Lotto Arena. That's been one of the great success points of these European players to a championship events. I mentioned when Selby won the Paul Hunter Classic. Also good crowds there, as they were in Poland, as I'm sure they will be for the next PTC on the continent in Bulgaria. Another groundbreaking event that. Now Carter badly needs to make his presence felt. And the cut. Six. Luckily for him, the jaws of the ball pocket saved the cue ball from the ball. Well, the first two frames were won quite quickly and decisively by Mark Selby, but the the black being out of commission here suggests that more work will be required in this frame. Well. He does seem to be queuing really nicely, though. And that's good to see, because he went to the World Championship this year severely handicapped by a, a neck injury could hardly get over the queue when he played Barry Hawkins no surprise he was heavily defeated and it was only natural to wonder whether that injury six and certainly worrying about it would carry over to this season well maybe it has right now though Mark Selby looking something like his best and Seven. Mark Selby's best, let me tell you, is formidable.
13. This is the third season of Players Tour Championship events. Selby won the second one of them, beating Barry Pinches in the final. Last season, he added another PTC title to his collection. 18. He's already won the Paul Hunter Classic this season, so if he were to prevail here later on tonight, that would be four PTC victories for him. And I know Neil Robertson has four under his belt as well. Nineteen. The black won't go. Prevented from potting by the red that's closest to it. Selby can see the yellow. Mark Selby, 19. And I think he's played that very well indeed. I don't think Carter can get through to see the main body of the Reds. Well, he flicked off the bunch, and he's left one on. The two highest value colours out of action for the moment. Pink too close to the yellow. The black too close to a red. But Selby has alternatives. One. Chief among them, the blue. That's worked out really well. Six. Seven. When Ali Carter won the Shanghai Masters in 2010, he beat Mark Selby in the semi-finals. 6-2. More recently though, out in China, Selby beat him 5-1 in the quarterfinals of last year's China Open, making breaks of 139, 130 and 129 in the process. And Selby also beat Carter 9-7 in the final of last year's Wuxi Classic when it was an invitation tournament. And guess what? This is a, a precursor of a match that will take place around 6,000 miles away a week tomorrow. Because Selby will face Carter in the last 32 of the International Championship in Chengdu. And so the world number one 19. trying to lay down a marker here.
Mark Selby, 19. Well, that was a massive miscue, wasn't it? Digging deep into the cue ball. He was trying to pop the blue to the middle pocket, almost potted it <laughs> to the top right hand corner, such was the extent of the miscue. Thankfully for Selby, though, he didn't leave Carter anything on. Let me quickly tell you, it's looking good for Mark Allen in the third frame against Andrew Paget. One frame each in the other semi-final, remember. Allen leading by 41 points to nil in frame three, though, on a break of 29. Oh, yeah, look at that. Here, yeah. Just the first goal shot for nothing, taking the cue ball back into Volk. Selby not on a colour, has the choice of rolling in behind the brown or just taking it quietly into the yellow, leaving the cue ball in behind pink. That's how we won. Dastardly. Well, Carter adopted the hit and hope philosophy there. He did make the hit. And I suppose it could have been worse, but a red has been left. Was going to overcut it. I think he was trying to avoid the other red. <laughs> Just didn't threaten. thought for a moment the pink might save Carter's bacon but it doesn't can't do anything with this red though can he dead straight what? just hoping to make some kind of angle in the end fortunate he didn't follow it in off Well, if the pink goes, it might be worth a try here because if he plays it slowly and misses, it will stay over the pocket and prevent Carter from potting the one that Selby's going to be on. Seven. Look at this. No margin of error whatsoever. Selby now 41 ahead, the black will make it 48, so still needs one more red. And he's a little too straight on the black for his own liking. Mm -hmm. 
chipping this to the middle pocket though should not be an issue in the slightest. 15. Can confirm by the way that Mark Allen whipped through frame number three. Andrew Padgett didn't pot a single ball. 16. So Allen leading 2-1 after losing the first frame on the black. And now it really does look as though Mark Selby is going to establish a 3-0 lead here. And when you consider he was 3-2 down against Paul Davison. So he won the closing two frames of that match. 19. All four against Marco Fu in the quarterfinals. And now the first three here. That's nine on the trot. In a situation like that, when they're not needed, Selby, the miss on the black did not matter at all. And so he leads 3-0. He's won nine consecutive frames in the tournament. The last two of the last 16. All four in the quarterfinals against Fu. And the first three against Ali Carter. Mark Selby needs one more frame to go through to the final of this Antwerp Open here in Belgium. So Selby 3, Carter 0 on the other table. They've just about started frame number 4. Mark Allen has replied well to the loss of the first frame against Andrew Paget. That's the first and Paget cleared blue, pink and black to snatch it. Allen's won the next two, but you might have just seen there the right hander Paget stroking in a red from distance, nicely on the blue. And he showed against Robertson. He won't go down without a fight. <coughs> and so Mark Selby requires this frame to complete his fourth whitewash in six matches in this tournament. Frame four, Mark Selby to break. course if he wins the match he will replace Stephen Maguire at the top of the players to a championship order of merit his participation in the PTC grand finals absolutely guaranteed already regardless of what happens in the remaining tournaments needs to win the closing four frames tough against anyone especially so against Mark Selby so many players have struggled with this table and there's no doubt it is a tough one to master Selby though is doing just that mastering it <laughs> and just as I say that a massive bounce off the side cushion means he snookered in behind the blue five 
had to happen. Again, that wasn't his fault. That was just a really abnormal bounce. I think that just about sums up Carter's match so far. Red hanging in the jaws. And if Selby hasn't got a direct path to it, I think he can come off the, the cushion to pot it. Well. Not just potting it. Ideal weight to drop on either pink or black. Nine. Seventeen. Well, it's looking bleak for Carter. Twenty three. Twenty four. And it's looking very, very promising for Selby. In these best of seven frame matches to complete 29. four 4-0 four whitewashes in six matches. Now that would be something. 30. Okay, it would have been a surprise had he lost a frame to Jurian Hurstens, the Belgian amateur he played first up on Friday. But since then he's beaten Ryan Day 4-0. Day a multiple world ranking event finalist. He beat Marco Fu, <laughs> former Grand Prix champion, former Premier 36. League champion. 4-0 in the quarterfinals. 37. And now quickly approaching a 4-0 win over a twice world ranking event winner in Ali Carter. By the way, the 
two ranking titles of Carter are exactly the same as the ones of Selby. Oh, Obviously not in the same year. But Selby's two in major ranking events. Welsh Open and Shanghai Masters. Oh, Ditto Ali Carter. Now they would have liked more angle on the blue here, either dropping this side of it or preferably getting on the other side of it. Still needs three more pots to put the frame safe. Avoids the yellow though, lots of running side. And now you get the feeling the end is not. Fifty nine. Hilda the Belgian referee, being asked to clean the cue ball. Last thing Selby wants on the verge of victory is a kick. One more round in the same draw, as it is, Parker, and what do you need for snooker? Well, how about this for domination? The first two matches we've featured on the main table today have resulted in 4-3 wins, both of them on the black. This has been the polar opposite. Terrible kick there. But it's come too late to affect the outcome. Seventy-five. Selby's queuing in this match has been of the very highest order. Look at that. The only question now: Will he go on to make his third century of the tournament? 81 It's a superb display First frame Carter was given the initial chance don't know whether he suffered a kick or whether he just missed the red the undercut it put the near jaw stayed on the table 96. Selby swooped with a 76 break and ever since he's just been relentless 97 106. Well, another ridiculous bounce off the side cushion. Selby can't quite believe his eyes. 109. 
113. One hundred and nineteen, eighteen. So, pink and black for one three one. Well, Mark Selby has won the Masters on a couple of occasions. with a 4-0 win over Ali Carter. You will not see a more dominant display than that. And if he carries on playing as well as that in the final, I think the engraver might want to start some work. Six matches played by Selby so far in the tournament. Four of them have resulted in 4-0 whitewashes. The big question, though, who will he play for the Antwerp Open title? Well, right now it looks like being Mark Allen because Allen has just won frame four with a sizable break and he leads Andrew Padgett the underdog, the giant killer by three frames to one look at the match statistics there Selby outscoring Carter by 366 points to 51 his pot success rate was 93% all in all top calibre stuff ok then so we know one finalist Mark Allen will on course to provide Mark Selby's opposition for the trophy. So three matches played on this main table today, two of them for three thrillers on the black. That one, a total runaway, lasted just over an hour. Now if you want to find out what's occurring in the other contest, the other semi-final, either watch these pictures from a distance or consult live scoring on www.worldsnooker.com. As for us here at LiveWorldSnooker.tv, well we'll be back for the final.